Among the many dangers that plague the galaxy in the 41st millennium, the one that brought us the most fun in our teen years were space hawks. But considering how dangerous it is for mankind letting the inhabitants of these places run amok in the empire, we're gonna need to recruit some help. Today, we're gonna be painting some space marines. The yellow ones. For many of us, these were the first space marines that we ever had, and they look kind of funny when you compare it to more modern versions of these miniatures. Just like the rest of the miniatures for my Space Crusade, these were primed with a cenital white coat over a black undercoat before that. And because we can use several different types of weapons with them, I have also magnetized all of those so they can change them in the game. But let's deal with the elephant in the room, which is painting yellow as Imperial Fists are that color. Yellow used to be super difficult to paint because of the type of pigment that the paints had. But nowadays, with contrast colors, it has become very, very easy to tackle. The process that I'm going to show you on this video, it's a very simple one that it has a couple of tricks in it that I have included from people who had done this before me. As usual in Rust the Watch, we are going to use contrast paints and contrast colors in order to create the same effect or the same type of schemes that we had back in the 90s. So let's get to it. We're going to start painting the armor, the power armor, with Sigval Burgundy mixed with a little bit of glazing medium. This undercoat, before we paint it with yellow, is gonna make that color explode. It's gonna make that yellow so deep and so rich that you will notice a significant difference if we just had painted yellow over the white coat. I want you to notice two things. The first one is that I'm using a big brush, which is going to save time. And the second one is that if anything pulls anywhere, I'm getting rid of that and making sure that the paint is consistently even all over the place. Notice here how I dab my brush onto the pools and just put them somewhere else or just get rid of them altogether. I let that mixture dry very well and we are going to move on to painting the yellow with contrast Imperial Fists. Notice that I'm using once again a very big brush because the more paint that we put with contrast, the less brush work that we want to do. Otherwise, we're gonna have streaks all over the place and this is not something that we want to have on flat surfaces like the ones from the power armor. So the bigger the brush, the better the paint job is gonna look. After that coat dries, I'm going to start doing some highlights with Ice Yellow from AK Interactive. There are many colors that work very well in the same fashion. You just need to find a very pale yellow to do this. I'm going to do a quick edge highlight with Ice Yellow. Edge highlights require a little bit of pulse and practice, so if you don't feel confident doing this, you can skip this step absolutely. However, I need to give you a disclaimer here. Because we are painting these miniatures trying to emulate the second edition Warhammer 40k era, yes, we're gonna have to do this. It's gonna make them pop, and because they are the miniatures that the players are gonna have on the table most of the time, you need them to be eye-catching. Next is a quick glaze with Bad Moon Yellow. The highlights are nice, but they are also a little bit too astrident. And in order to tone down that, we're gonna give this glaze on top of them. If you overdid the glazing, because you are a moron like myself, you can always go back with ice yellow and give final highlights in the most prominent places. The Aquila Imperialis and the borders of the pauldrons, we're gonna paint with Blood Angels Red. This also includes the different weapons that we have with the Space Marines, with the exception of the bolt guns. As I said before, because equipment can change from mission to mission, you need to magnetize the weapons or make sure that you can change them ad hoc at any time that you play the game. And besides a different loadout for weaponry, you also had access to equipment and orders for your whole squad. All three Space Marine chapters in the game have their own cards and most of them were similar between themselves. However, a few of those were unique for each chapter which influenced greatly the gameplay experience. Space Crusade is an old game, so I'm going to assume that some of you have no idea what I'm talking about here. The Space Marine players had access to a range of weapons that they could equip their squads with. All Space Marine squads had to be equipped with at least one bolter and one heavy weapon, but beyond that they could choose any combination of those as they pleased. The commanders themselves had three choices of weaponry as well. There are a few caveats. 
If you were using heavy weapons instead of altars, your space marines will be moving 4 squares instead of 6, and the alien player will also earn more points by killing those marines with heavy weapons instead of the ones with altars. With Drakenhof Nightshade, we are going to paint the joints in the armor as well as some of the cabling in it. Drakenhof Nightshade is going to also be the base for the black areas of the weaponry. We're going to follow up with Leviathan Blue to darken those very same areas. Leviathan Blue, it's a very dark blue, but it makes that previous coat of Drakenhof Nightshade look light black, and it makes a beautiful contrast against the yellow of the power armor. Notice how I try to leave the borders of the areas that I'm painting with. This blue, Leviathan Blue, in the previous Drakenhof Nightshade coat. This means that I'm trying to create the highlights by just shading within the areas. However, we're gonna have to retouch that later with an extra highlight to make this, once again, pop. I'm using Ice Yellow to do this, and I'm fixing also the mistakes that I might have made when I'm painting with these dark colors against the yellow. It is inevitable to sometimes stain when you're doing a quick paint job, so don't fret much about it and just fix it the best you can. I am also using Ice Yellow to highlight some of the black areas themselves. The cables and the joints in the armor do have some volume that I want to expand by just using Ice Yellow very carefully with thin lines over here. If your highlights are a little bit too thick, you can glaze the inside of them with Magma Drot Flame. This creates a gradient that is not as dark as the red and not as light as the highlights themselves, making the red look a little bit orangish and more natural, also giving it that nice 40k from 2nd edition look. With the power armor and most of the weapon surfaces painted, it's time now to start working with the metals. Here I use a very light metallic color, but I think it is better to go with a mid-tone and then work with it, because it's gonna cover the stains that you have probably done in the previous steps. Next is darkening those metals, and I'm going to use Cryptek Armor Shade, which makes this very beautiful brown tinge on them. This is gonna make the metals look dirty, used and abused, which is exactly what I'm expecting to happen if you are going to be storming space hulks on a regular basis. To save time, I'm going to use the same paint to paint the pouches on the space marines. Any brown will do, but I think this one is just fine. After that, we are just going to give some highlights in the metallic areas. Remember when I told you that every Space Marine chapter in the game had its own rules to make it a little bit different from the other ones? Well, this particular one, the Imperial Fist, actually have one of the most interesting pieces of equipment in the game. I don't recall ever playing with these Space Marines, the Imperial Fists, and not using Suspensors. Suspensors are a great tool because it allows heavy weapons to have the same mobility as the Space Marines with bolters. By combining certain orders and equipment cards, the Imperial Fists become an absolute beast powerhouse of destroying fire. For instance, by giving the Heavy Bolter and the Combi Weapon card to your commander, you create a new Plasma Gun in the team. Rusty Wars is a small channel that focuses on very particular paint jobs and all the skull miniatures. This means that I have to fight the algorithm every time that I publish a video. You can help me overcome this by subscribing to the channel, leaving a like or commenting below. And if you really like what I do here, what about becoming a supporter like the awesome brass liquors over here? If you don't like that kind of commitment but you still want to buy me a beer or a coffee, you can always click on the super thanks below that looks like this. Thank you very much for your support, let's get back to the video. Most of the miniatures are finished already and now comes the easiest and the most interesting part of it all, which is painting the small details. We're gonna start by painting the helmet lenses and the jewels on the Aquila Imperialis. First, we're going to use Ethermite Blue to paint the whole surface of those areas. Then, with Elderi Emerald, we're going to paint the bottom corner of both the lenses and the jewels. 
The commander of the unit has a wreath of florals on the chest and I'm using the same colors to paint those. The last one is Terradon Turquoise, which is the darkest of the three greens that we're using here. We are creating a gradient that goes from the lightest corner on the top right to a darkest one on the bottom left. The lenses of the helmet are slightly different but follow the same procedure. The darkest area of the lenses point towards the center of the face, whereas the lightest area will be pointing outwards towards the ears. To finish it off, we're going to paint a couple of white dots in both the dark and the light areas of the lenses and the jewels. Because I cannot stop tweaking, I also use the pure white paint now to paint a couple of extreme highlights in some of the areas of a power armor. I'm cleaning up the face on the commander because we are going to paint it now with the proper color for somebody that has no helmet. Does this guy remind you of anyone in particular? I mean, look at that chiseled chin, those features. Yeah, no, not nothing. Well, let me give you a hint. Hey, everyone. Anyways, after these highlights with a mixture of white and bronze flesh, the skin looks a little bit cerulean and I'm going to use a few glazes of red and blue to make it look more alive. I have used Levidon Blue to paint the pupils on the eyes and also to write a small freehand on the parchment symbol that we have on the shoulder pad. With this done, we are almost there. I now want to paint the power weapons from the commander, the power axe and the power sword. And because we have painted them in yellow, I think the most beautiful color that will go with them, the most contrasting one, will be purple. With an undertone of Dreadful Visage, and we follow them with Magus Purple to start building the color. I will be creating a sort of texture that will look somewhat like crackling energy on the blade by applying the paint this way, the small dots along the areas where I want the sparks to be at in the blades. I'm going to repeat the process with Luxin Purple, doing the same thing, just adding small dots on the areas that I want darkened, and then I'm gonna follow up with Sajish Purple to darken even further those areas. I intentionally focus on the edges of the blades and darken them progressively, as if the energy that is coming from inside them will be cooler on those areas. Next, I'm going to come with pure white and I'm going to focus on those areas where I think the energy will be coming out from inside the blade. And as a last step, I glaze some of the strongest highlights that I have done with white with Eidolon Purple Air Color. Last step is adding some transfers to the miniatures. I researched how the different symbols will be located on the pauldrons of the Space Marines and I started cutting them from the transfer sheet. One by one, I put them on a small cup of water to make sure that the paper and the transfer separated. And then with the help of some tweezers and a damp brush, I pushed them into place on each one of the pauldrons. You have to be patient and your brush must be very wet in order to move those around. And then you have to just retrieve the excess water and let them dry. And to make sure that they stayed in place no matter what, I gave them a coat with a brush on varnish. Tap the varnish on the transfers because otherwise you might move them down. In the Space Crusade, the Imperial Fists are the masters of supreme firepower. When things get hairy, nothing fixes problems as fast as a plasma cannon to the face. And if the cowardly Sinos need the feel of punching up to feel courageous again, rocket launchers and assault cannons will make them pay dearly for that mistake. These guys are finished, but I would like you to tell me which is the next chapter they want me to paint for my Space Crusade. Blood Angels or Ultramarines? Click on this video next and remember, my name is Miguel, this has been Rush the Wash, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Un beso. Adios.